I did not know that was like an East Coast New England thing <laughs> until really recent, until I read the Rye Maker. Um, we were living in Indiana. Um, I had grown up with my mom. You know, it comes in a can. You take it out of the can, you heat it up, and you eat it with baked beans. Um, we were living in Indiana, I think, is what happened, and I could not find this bread. And um, for whatever reason, I was feeling nostalgic for it or something. I found this recipe, and, and I tried it. Um, and I think it was a really good uh, introductory recipe for me as someone who was had always thought of myself as, well, I can cook, but I can't bake. Um, because it's actually not a true bread recipe. It's a quick bread, so it's closer to like a cake. Um, and, you know, it, it comes together really well, and I feel like it's a forgiving recipe. You can add raisins or currants. You can kind of adapt it a little bit to your own taste. So, um, to get started, so what you are having your kit, which you, when you take it home, you have whole wheat flour, corn flour, and rye flour in equal amounts. So it's one cup each. Um, and that kind of is the foundation of this recipe. And, uh, you know, what, when you make it in the can and you steam it, that it's more like a, a British steamed pudding, pudding, which is not something I have a lot of knowledge about or experience with, but, um, you know, it, it makes sense if you're thinking about um, someone several hundred years ago who is you know, British and they have rye flour and wheat flour and in uh, you know, North America there's corn, you know, you're introduced to corn. So um, another thing I really like about the Rye Baker book is that um, Stanley Ginsberg is the author, he talks a lot about um, you know, immigrant recipes and recipes from people coming from different places and uh, these recipes adapting. And so if you're here in December for the <coughs> Sarma recipe, I talked a little bit about um, how like what I grew up thinking of as Armenian food was actually Armenian American food and that um, depending on where people end up, their um, foods and recipes adapt to what they can get where they are. So um, I like that it kind of, there's a nice little th through line there. Um, so what I like to do with this recipe is I mix all my dry ingredients in a, like a medium sized bowl and then you need to sift all of them into a bigger bowl. So I like to mix them up first. I don't know that you have, you could probably do it the other way. Uh, but this is just my personal preference. Um, and uh, I will also mention that the Ginsburg recipe is slightly different. Oh, I forgot. I forgot the buttermilk. <laughs> Would you grab it? It's in the fridge. It's in like a weird little plastic jug. Okay. Um, so his recipe is a little different from Fanny Farmer's. Um, and he uses a slightly different like uh, ratio of flours to each other. But he also uses whole milk and uh, instead of buttermilk or sour milk. And uh, I'm going to say <laughs> right now, I have a very bad milk allergy. I have never had this recipe with um, a, a true dairy milk. So um, I cannot speak to whether or not it's like better either way. Have, you've had both. Mm -hmm. what, do you, what do you think? Is one better? Or are they pretty similar? I like it better with the buttermilk. Ah, uh, okay. So. Even though I don't like buttermilk, I like it in that recipe. Okay. Used um, like almond milk, and I will. Okay, so this is what I'll say about substituting a non-dairy milk. I tried it 
in the can and I've done it in the oven. It was not good in the can. I don't know why. I used, the last time I made it, I did one in a can on the stove and I did one in the oven. And the one that I did on the stove did not turn out. It was fine, it wasn't bad, but it was just like nothing to write home about. Uh, and the one in the oven was very good, I liked it. <laughs> so um, if you're substituting, um, I kind of feel like, I've never done coconut milk, but I feel like coconut milk might work better because it has higher fat content and it can be a little thicker. I know there are ways to make your own non-dairy buttermilk. Um, I think with vinegar, I've never tried it because I thought it was fine with just the way I did it. Um, okay, so corn flour. Um, you want, this is stone ground, but like the finer you can get, the better. Um, since you sift it, it doesn't really make that big of a difference because like I have found with this one, it, there are uh, some granules that get left in the sifter, so I don't think worry about it, but <laughs> that's me. Okay, so, um, dark fried flour, um, I have only ever used um, dark rye when I'm baking, and I I like that. I've never tried with a, a light rye, so um, the Fanny Farmer recipe doesn't specify what type of rye. So, um, you know, I don't know if that's more authentic to do a lighter or what was available. Okay, so we also need a tablespoon of uh, baking soda. And a teaspoon of salt. I thought I had like a big thing of salt. <laughs> and I do, but it's coarse salt, so. Uh, I stole this from the break room, <laughs> so I will have to put it back. Okay, so that is, that's our dry ingredient situation. That's all we have to do. Easy peasy. Um, I can kind of give you a little look at, like, I think my favorite thing about this recipe besides the can is um, the three flowers. So, um, yeah, they're just, I just think it's interesting. I don't know really. Have um, you put liquid in it already? No, I haven't yet. I'm gonna set it first. <coughs> so, there we go. Okay, I forgot to mention my mom visiting too, so. Well, she was here in December, she came back. <laughs> Oh, it, was, it was what my my dad was from Boston, so he always made, had baked beans and brown bread for us. Yeah, but I didn't know that. I mean, I knew my grandpa was from Boston. Um, I never made any kind of connection uh, between the bread and my grandpa. So, um, so I like to mix it up. Um, thoroughly, and then I was really excited. I got the sifter from Walmart, <laughs> but I was like, oh, it's just like my grandma's. <laughs> and um, like, I'm, I'm so happy that this is a part of the, uh, you know, we've been kind of building our collection up of cooking supplies, and so that's really, it's, it's been fun to do that um, because I want us to have like a nice collection, especially when we are able to start doing community cooking classes. Um, I think we will need more of everything so that people can participate instead of just 
watching. Um, but uh, I'm trying to do this as fast as I can because it's not that much flour, but it's kind of. I part of me was like, should I sift it before? Um, so you don't have to watch me like spin uh, flour and. Have you ever made it without that? Like you forgot to sift it. Have you ever done that? I've done it without sifting it. I didn't notice the difference. Okay. <laughs> but maybe, um, I mean, a more, a more refined palette might. <laughs> so you could cheat after this and just go to the rest of it. Oh, yeah, no, no one would ever know. I mean, except for you all. <laughs> um, yeah, I, when I made it in, when we lived in Indiana, I just, I didn't, I didn't sip it. I don't think, um, the Ginsburg recipe doesn't, he doesn't call for sifting, but it is kind of fun. So, and I guess if you're using a coarser grain corn flour, I don't know that it would, it, you know, might keep out the bigger pieces, um, but I think it's probably, okay, so I'm back. I guess in my head I'm sort of like, it mixes up it up really well, like I know for sure all my flowers are really incorporated with each other. Okay. At home, I don't have one of these. I just have like a mesh thing, so I just <coughs> use a spoon. Uh, and it's great. But I do kind of want, after doing this now, I'm like, maybe I need a sifter at home. something um, I feel like this recipe even though it might not be exactly the same it it's close enough that it like I have that nostalgia feeling of like oh I love this bread <laughs> so um, all right we've got all of our dry ingredients um, we've got two cups of buttermilk um, so, and then three quarters cups of uh, molasses, and I like blackstrap molasses, but I could not find any. I ordered some off the internet, but it exploded on the way here. So um, we had to send it back. Um, so it's just like unsulfured dark molasses. It's good, it, but um, I think 
it's also taste. If you know, you can. I feel like the black strap is a little less sweet. Um, and I kind of feel like you can do this a little more like a dessert. Um, but I like it. You know, it's always going to be sweet because of molasses, even if you use black strap. But um, I like it savory. Um, I think that's three. I was talking, so I lost track. But um, I'm a big fan of molasses. I feel like we don't. It's like gingerbread, and this is the only other thing I know that I've baked with molasses, but. Um, it has a really strong, unique flavor um, that I enjoy. Um, so the dough is pretty easy to put together. It doesn't. Um, it doesn't. The molasses doesn't kind of clump up, which was something when I first started trying to make this myself. I was worried that it would be clumpy and um, you know, it would be hard work to kind of get everything incorporated, but um, I have never had a problem with it. Um, so when I take this around, you'll see um, the dough, it doesn't look like a red dough, it doesn't look like um, flour a wheat flour bread. It looks much more like um, like banana bread dough or um, like maybe even pancake mix. Do you so have an oven in your back room? We don't. <laughs> we don't have an oven. So, so what do you do with this? Um, I don't know. I, I, have, I steamed it on a hot plate. Oh. So. And I don't know if you can smell it. You might be here for a while. <laughs> but it, uh, out. I really like the smell of the dough. Mm -hmm. um, you could do that. You could do that camping. Yeah, you could totally do it camping. Um, so. Smells good. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that's like closer to. You know, when people started making this, it was, you know, you had an open cook fire. I thought we were there. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, uh, I got cans. Um, it was surprisingly hard to find um, metal cans. Um, you can, I tried this with smaller and different sized items. You could also use a little loaf pan. Um, there's flexibility. Um, but this is kind of the classic. What was in those? I bought nothing. I bought them. <laughs> yeah, um, I will say they had a little lip on the inside. I used a can opener to cut it off because I didn't want the bread to break when I took it out. Um, can, can every can tell you it degrees? But uh, it, will, uh, you, it could have a jagged edge, Just is something to keep in mind. So where, where did you find those? Oh, on Amazon. Oh. Um, what, how many ounces? Are they out? These, I think are 12. Hmm? I think they're 12. That, no. Or not. 12 ounces, more like a quart. Yeah, they might be quart. 32 ounces. Yeah. Um, I feel like the old school big coffee can is like really, um, because that would be the best way if you want like one. Um, I cannot fit all of that dough in one of these, so. Um, so, this is canola oil. You know, you could use a different kind. Um, this ex the dough expands a lot during cooking. 
So um, I try to make sure that I get um, all the way to the top. And um, the recipe also says uh, to fill them two thirds of the way up. My experience with that has been <laughs> It always overflows. So I'm with these guys. I'm doing halfway. Um, so I did make one earlier. The can is still warm. <laughs> so this this one I did two thirds of the way up, um, and some of it did um, spill over. I don't know if you want to pass it around. I'm gonna try to uh, take it out after this, so we can see how well I did. Um, <laughs> So, have you made that here? I did. I made it in the library director's office. <laughs> so, I started it at like noon, and it was done at no. I guess I started at one is when I started steaming it. So you put it in a pot of water. I did. Yeah. Um. So you could probably steam it in an instant pot mm -hmm. because you can do puddings in which puddings in an instant pot. Oh yeah. yeah. You totally could. I think you could also steam it in a water bath in the stove. I just I didn't look up a recipe for that, but I think it's doable. I um, think it says it's doing it right here. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Uh, set the brown bread on a trivet of water uh, in a pot of water that rises halfway up. Recipe and steam the pudding. Oh, you do. You can do puddings, English puddings, in the oven, so it would work. So uh, this is about uh, three quarters of the way up. So Um, and we're just going to pretend. <laughs> so I did bring, I'm not plugging it in because we don't have three and a half hours. So, <laughs> but just so we can all see how it went down. Um, this is the pot I used. And again, like this is, this is what I made um, today. So. I thought I was so smart. I was like, look at this awesome trivet. It has these little um, handles that I can just use. It's like a quarter of an inch too tall, the legs. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, don't do that, probably. <laughs> or use a bigger pot. Um, so what I did today, instead is I have a bunch of mason jars because uh, in April I'm going to do a mason jar hydroponics workshop so if you're interested in that you can grow um, you can grow lettuce and greens um, in coconut core in a mason jar I'm doing it at home right now to practice to make sure I did it wrong the first time and everything died so <laughs> I paid better attention to the, to the instructions, and so now I have um, little seedlings going. So anyways, because of that, I had mason jars. So I just um, put four of these guys on the bottom. Um, and so, you can use, I've never used cloth to do this. Um, I'm sure it works fine. So you can use aluminum foil or you can use cloth with string and tie it. Um, but you do need to, Fanny Farmer says use butter. I'm not doing that. Uh, <laughs> so you do need to uh, just kind of 
spray or grease it with whatever your butter. Um, she says use a foil primper. I've never done that. I think it's okay, but if you want to be, uh, you know, following the recipe, do that. Um, I don't think I can fit both of them in here. Excuse me. What, oh. did, what did you say you never have done? The fo a foil crimp, crimp the foil. Oh. I don't have a. I guess I could have bought one, but I. I I never needed it. So. What does that mean? Uh, I think it just makes the foil. Um, Goof up. Like it, yeah, like it, so it is tight. It, it'll make the foil tighter on the can, but I don't know. So I brought this water out. I don't think it's enough. You're going to want to do halfway up the can or whatever um, receptacle you're using. Um, and what I do is I don't get it to a rolling boil. I get it sort of just under. Um, and then I just leave it there for three and a half hours. Uh, this is not quite halfway up, so we'll just pretend though. So, got your lid, um, bring it up to a boil, or just under a boil, walk away. <laughs> I usually check to make sure um, it's not boiling too hard. Um, and but like, I'll just kind of go and like look in, make sure everything, it hasn't fallen over or something like that. Um, so that is, uh, oh, I'm sorry. Do you usually have to add more water? Yeah, I did, I think when I did it, I did two of these. I just, I didn't have another pitcher, so. Yeah. Well, during the cooking, do you have to add Oh, more when, water? no, I do, I have never had to add more. Mm, um, interesting. Yeah. So, um, you know, it says here you can do it uh, in the oven, but you put boiling water in the bain marie. Oh, okay. And then you can, that would, might be better than sitting in the soup. Okay, so, let's see how well I did. <laughs> um, got a butter knife just in case. Oh, look at that. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Nice. Wow. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> She's amazing. Uh, so, all right, I'll just use this. So, yeah, um, turn it sideways, slice it. It's great with um, butter. Um, I guess it's awesome to like it with cream cheese. I have never done that, but. <laughs> And uh, I'm really happy that it uh, <laughs> that it came out of the can. <laughs> I was like, you know what? I can be vulnerable at work. <laughs> uh, and so um, this was a really short one. Any questions or? You, you seem to, when you were demonstrating, you seem to just not put too much spray inside the can. And I was amazed at how it slipped out. Oh, yeah. I mean, I try to get, like, enough that I see it, but it's not, like, dripping down. Um, so that was also, this is a brand new can, so there a lot came out at first. So I think if it, if it was kind of, not working as well, I might spray for longer. Um, but yeah, I I like this easy recipe. Um, and it, oh. I noticed if you made enough for two, you can only cook one in there. Have you done two at a time? And if you don't, how long can you save the dough for? Uh, or do you that's know? a good question. I, I have at home, I have used a bigger pot. 
or and also I've used smaller cans. So um, I don't have a great answer for you, but I would do the same as like um, pancake um, batter or something like that. Like I usually would use that within like 24, 48 hours. So it's probably, I mean, there's no like eggs. There's milk though. Um, but as it says here in the oven, you could have like a hotel pan and two of them in there with the boiling water uh -huh. and then bake them off. Maybe you could freeze them. You, yeah, so I, I have only done it, you know, used everything. I do have another can in the fridge up over here, so uh, I'm going to probably make more tomorrow. <laughs> so, oh yes. I was just thinking, maybe you could, if you had two cans and you had left for a bit, maybe you could refrigerate the batter for like an hour and a half and then take it out. Yeah. And I let mean, it warm up again. Yeah, like I think, I don't think mm -hmm. if you left it overnight, I would look it up though because like, uh, I'm not an expert um, and food safety is important, so, um, you know. Well, it depends on how long the baking soda stays activated because yeah. if you're going to do it the next day, is it going to be less? What, I mean, I think. What, one thing I've thought of doing, which I have never actually done, is um, keep the dry ingredients, you know, a batch of it, just ready to go, and then I just have to add the um, molasses and milk, um, which doesn't really solve, answer your question, but I like the idea. It's kind of like Bisquick. <laughs> like, you're just ready to go. Um, but yeah, um, I did... So Elisa found a really great rest, or a really great story about the uh, molasses flood of I can't remember what year, but um, oh, nineteen nineteen. So there was a molasses flood in Boston. So she included the story and like a history about the brown brown bread and kind of stuff about molasses, um, and then. I shared some my um, my experience growing up eating the brown bread and sort of learning more about how that uh, tied into like family history and you know just uh, had I had it's not something I'd ever thought about um, you know being unique to a specific region of the United States. Um, but we have, there's a lot of different foods that are um, regional here, so. Uh, and I talked a little bit about my grandpa, who was a pretty cool guy. Um, I also included a recipe for Boston-style baked beans. Um, so if you're feeling adventurous or like you want a little more of a challenge, you could make uh, some baked beans and have sort of the classic. You could also do it from a can. There's no judgment here. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, so yeah, I like I said, your cooking kit have the flour. Um, there, it should be pretty. I mean, pretty easy to put together at home. Um, and oh, I'm assuming it freezes well. The bread? Yeah, I. It probably does. I have never. I have, it's never lasted that long in my house. <laughs> Um, but yeah, I mean, it, I, it seems like it would. Yeah. So, all right. Anything else? In Are we going to taste it? Yeah. I can't, oh, yeah, I'm, I'm sorry. Right. I forgot. Later. Wow, I mom. <laughs> I forgot. <laughs> but yeah, um, yeah, I'm sorry, but I, I thought about, um, trying to find the canned bread, but then it's like, we don't have an oven, so I, it's like maybe I could slice it up and put it in the toaster, <laughs> but um, that seemed like too much to do. So um, next month, next month, Chef Suzanne is doing a winter squash recipe. So that is going to be amazing. Um, and 
uh, yeah, we are, I think we are, there's interest from um, funders in the community for us to continue to do these types of programs. So, um, you know, we, Elisa and I both really enjoy doing them. I know Chef Suzanne loves to do them as well. So, um, you know, respond to your uh, <coughs> evaluation if there's something that you haven't seen that you would like to see, um, because we, we do listen. Um, a lot of people requested uh, tofu recipes, so, um, you know, this is your library and uh, your program, so we want it to reflect that. Um, so thanks for coming and <laughs> uh, experiencing brown bread with me. <laughs>